Shouting hallelujah is not a definition of being one with God. Okay? So there's hardly any confession. It can be very rare. I could say, Pastor, I killed Joe Biden. Then I would say, hey. But, you know, the, we, humans, there's who, how they are. All right. Let me explain what I mean to you. Under the best pastor that ever lived, they were going to crusade together. They would come back together, sleep in the same room, eat from the same plate. He has a way of doing some coded things. Do you know, now let me tell you one thing I always advise people, when you come in contact, because by God's grace, I know I'm a genuine pastor. Okay? So when you come in contact with someone like me, I say this with all humility, I usually advise that you see, it doesn't matter the stage at which I met you, but you see, some kurukere things, permit my English, eh? some kurukere and coded thing, kurukere is from crooked, okay? It's just a Yoruba some kurukere kind of things, eh? stop it. Okay? Because uh, it messes up the public anointing you are receiving. Satan came in through something that Judas did not work on. You know, I came across a commentary that said it's likely that Judas was someone that managed finance before. So Jesus could hand that over to him. Okay? So sometimes, one of the things that affects you in a fantastic atmosphere like this is that there are things you don't want to change. But we are shouting hallelujah together. And so people wonder after the four, five, six, seven years of being with him, why is it that certain things have still not resembled it? Judas. Now, imagine judging Jesus by Judas. That's why there's a way you study your scripture and you don't say you know that church. Well, no, no, that person. Someone can be so close to pastor, yet doing some nonsense. Go come in. You know why? Not as if I don't love the person. But this only tells me that even myself, if I'm still striving for perfection like Jesus, <laughs> yet you can be under a perfect pastor. Definition of love himself. That's why sometimes they let us love them, let us love. It's not, if someone that wants to change, we change. So, the access point of the enemy in your life a lot of times are coded things. <laughs> oh, I'm not speaking to robots. Huh? Coded things. Coded things. But all of us come to church, you know, praise God, hallelujah, honestly. But coded things. You don't know that pastor might not know, but demons know. It's not my duty. It's not my calling to be investigating every life. No. But demons know. Paul, I know. Peter, I know. Jesus, who are you? They know. So, the access point, this is the beginning of the meltdown. You know, I have seen people that, <laughs> I have seen people, in fact, there, there are people I've advised. I just tell them, I say, see, you know, I, I, I love your activity in church. I enjoy your, you know, your alacrity to things. I said, but the truth be told, you see, this thing that you told me about, watch it. Huh? I said, because with experience, I can give you a timer and tell you that in four weeks' time, your dedication will reduce. Ah, no, Pastor, honestly, in fact, I've decided, uh, <laughs> you don't understand spirits. I said, watch it. The same, you know, fragrance of life, honestly, God, in fact, it, I've just found the place. Calm down. Calm down. If you don't work on this thing, it is going to be a constant entry point. Constant entry point. Now, stop taking your mind to, you know, fornication. No. There are simple things as a life of gossip. Work on it. If not, that thing will be a constant entry point. And Satan eventually begins to use it to always mess up your relationship with the church. And there's something I've discovered. I can tell you that. For example, oh, today is going to be hot, man. For example, if you came to Fragrance of Life to toast a lady, hmm, which people do, my fear for you is that if she doesn't agree, you won't stay. So if you know that God brought you here for something more, please don't be distracted. 
Because for her to tell you no, and you are still worshipping here, you must be very matured. And most people don't have it. Okay? So sometimes, that, that entry point of the enemy could be as simple as reduce your emotionalism. Everywhere you go, you fall in love in a day. Oh, no, it's, I'm being real. You fall in love so easily. You don't, even, you don't even get in love. You fall in love. You just attended a church. You think you say, okay, is this guy, well, he wants to marry me. But when you do service on Sunday, before you know what's happening again, he stops calling you and everything. And I, I don't connect with that church again. You are childish, okay? You should have come and know what church is for. So there are entry points. This was the same attitude you had. Maybe when you were in the world, everywhere you go, every club, you have a boo. And then eventually you became born again. You didn't work on that thing. And so everywhere you go, you just easily, you know, you just see this fine guy, you just see this fine girl before you know it, you are just, you know, you can't concentrate again. And then everything that is being, pre am I making sense? Yes, These things are entry points. And so under a powerful pastor like Jesus, Judas was having certain codes, certain secret things that he was doing. The same thing with everyone here. Listen, you have a life. But I mean, in a, in a, not long from now, we're going to close service. You're gonna, some of you know what is calling you after service. You know where you are likely to head to after service. And then you're going to return, uh, probably if you want to come on Thursday or something, and then another bombarding with the anointing. Eventually, it gets depleted again. Are we together? See this scripture with me. Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 13. Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 13. The flowers appear, verse 13. The fig tree put it forth half green figs, okay, which is things are blossoming, all right? Things are blossoming. Oh, you know, let's, let's be real, fragrance of life. Look at the favor God is bringing to us. Man, it's like fragrance of life is blossoming. This is obvious. The fig tree put it forth half green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. You know what that is? That's a fragrance. Okay, so when you, are, when you are smelling, have you ever gone to a place where there are clean mango trees? You know that smell, right? As you just, it just looks natural, okay? So the tender grapes, they give a good smell. He says, arise, my love, my fair one, and come, come. In other words, things are working here. So the same way you were invited. And someone is like, Menko, as in, you need to know, I mean, awesome things are happening. <laughs> if you are like that, just watch it. The next verse. Okay, all right. Oh, my dove, thou art... That are in the cleft of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. For sweet is thy voice and thy countenance is comely. All right. So what is the problem in verse 15? Take away the foxes. The little... <laughs> just, when you just vex, that is you. I have vexed. But you can lead praise. Sorry, I'm not talking. <laughs> but when you are angry, nobody wants to look at your eyeballs. Take away the little fox. Take, take us the fox. The little fox. He, he helped us. They are little. They are not the big ones. The little ones that look like squirrel. They are still growing. You know what happens? If the little foxes eat the little grapes, the little foxes will become big foxes. And the grapes will remain little grapes. Mm, that's a proverb. Some of you don't know why the impact is not growing. The impact of partial growth is not growing. Because there are foxes eating the impact. So instead of the impact to grow, the problem is growing. So he said, take away the foxes, the little foxes that do what? They spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Things are still starting in your life. Oh God, stop those kurukere things. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Satan will always access your life through it. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this is what people don't know. Look, look at everything that came from verse 13. Okay? Oh, come my lover. Do this. Oh, the grapes are this. He said, but please, take away those things. Obviously, the favor and the anointing of God is heavy in a place like this. But you need to watch yourself. Are you sure there are no entry points? So that service is going to be awesome, wonderful things. But after you leave, there are these foxes that eat the grapes. So Judas was under the best pastor that ever lived. 
because of that stealing, Satan made entered through that attitude and made him to misinterpret something. 